this video, I'm going to introduce the capacitor. Capacitor is a very important component of electrical circuits. One of the first electrical devices invented because it's a very important device for storing charge. Let's see how this thing works. A capacitor is two metal plates separated by an insulator. So if you look at the picture, you see here is one metal plate. Here is the other metal plate. In the picture, there is nothing in between them. Could be air. These two plates are connected to what I'm illustrating here is just a 12 volt battery. It's a typical battery you'd have in a, in a car, 12 volt. There is one terminal labeled positive, and there's one terminal labeled negative. Now, that doesn't mean there's a positive negative. It means really you should interpret the positive, meaning this is a higher potential, negative, meaning this is a lower potential. But for now, let's remember a principle we've talked about previously that is at equilibrium every part of a conductor will be at the same voltage same potential because if it's not at equilibrium you'll have an electric field in the conductor cause charge to move either that charge will move indefinitely or it will reach equilibrium in this case with the two plates attached to the battery, it will reach equilibrium. So here's the question we ask. Here we have a positive terminal or the high, high potential. The red indicates there's a wire conductor. Then we have the metal plate. How does that plate at equilibrium reach the same potential as that terminal. Well, we learned in earlier videos that a positive charge carries a, or brings a positive potential. So if we simply put some positive charge on that plate, call that plus Q, you put positive charge on that plate until <clears throat> it is at the same potential as that unless you're red wire, and that terminal of the battery. Once they're all at the same potential, means the voltage is the same everywhere in the conductor. There is no electric field. There is no force. Charge is not going to flow. The equilibrium. What about the other plate? How do we bring this plate to a low potential so that it's the same potential as that negative terminal. Well, remember, negative charge carries negative potential. So by putting negative charge on that plate, we will lower that potential until every part of the conductor, the plate, the wire, the terminal, the same voltage. If there is part of the conductor where the voltage is different, that delta V will give you an electric field, will make charge flow until you reach equilibrium. At equilibrium, there's no field, no force, and you have what is to be look like a static situation. Now, one thing to <clears throat> point out here. We've raised the potential of one plate with a plus Q. We've lowered the other minus Q. Electrical forces are so large, you cannot have an imbalance. The plus Q and the minus Q, they have the same, the same number of positive charges on one, you have negative on the other. Remember, you can't create charge. You can only move it around or separate it. So whatever positive charge you have on one plate, you'll have an equal opposite negative charge on the other plate. Okay, 
there is the plates obtain equal and opposite charge Q. And now, since the one plate on the right has the same potential as the positive terminal of the battery, the plate on the left has the same potential as the negative terminal. That whatever delta V there is on the battery, the same delta V would be measured across the two plates. Okay. <clears throat> this device is called a capacitor. There's the symbol. You see you have the two horizontal lines come in, then you have the two vertical right there. That's the capacitor. The symbol that you put in a circuit diagram resembles a device. You have two wires come in, you have the two plates, they're separated. That's the capacitor. And by attaching it to a battery or DC power supply, you store charge in this device. That's, a, <clears throat> that's the purpose to store charge. Now let's talk about how we get that charge. Why do the plates have to have equal and opposite charge? And how do you put a positive charge on a plate? The only thing that can move through those wires are electrons. Let's look at that. So we start with the two plates, one on the left, one on the right. Those plates, in metal, you have positive nuclei, you have negative electrons. Nuclei are fixed in place, they cannot move. The electrons in a metal can move. Of course, there are many more. I'm just illustrating I've got three plus, three minus on each plate. The only thing that can move are the electrons. You have two neutral plates. What does the battery do? And the battery supplies energy to move electrons. It takes energy to move them because you're removing a negative away from a positive where it's attached to be neutral. You're putting it in another place, it's going to become more negative. It takes energy to do it. You're taking something away from what it's attracted to and putting it next to something it's repelled from. So if we want the right plate to be positive, let's say we remove two electrons. If you look at that right plate, you have three positive, one negative, you have a net positive charge on that right plate. The two negative electrons have to go somewhere. There's the plus Q. They're placed on the other plate. So now <clears throat> the, the left plate, which gains those two electrons, you have five negative, three positive. So you see, just as the right-hand plate has a net two plus, left-hand plate has a net two minus. I'm not saying what those units are, you know, whether it's portions of a coulomb, whatever. But that's how you move charge around. You put a positive charge by removing electrons. You put a negative charge by placing electrons. Now, <clears throat> Here's an important formula. The charge on that positive plate is equal to C. Now, we use C to stand for Coulomb. In this context, C stands for capacitance. Capacitance is related to the ability of this device to hold charge. So if you want to, you can take this as a definition. What is the capacitance? For a given delta V of the battery, you attach to those plates. It takes a certain amount of charge moving from one to the other to bring that to equilibrium. The relationship between the charge and the voltage is Q equals C delta B, where C is the capacitance. Notice that C is going to be charge per volt. So C, which is capacitance, is Coulomb per volt, is called the Farad, capital F. I know we use that for force, we use C for Coulomb, but this is just the way it's designed. In this context, C stands for capacitance.
S stands for ferret. Now, <clears throat> you see how this topic followed from the previous video where we said charge has a potential. I've noticed in talking to students that sometimes students may mix up or interchange the words charge and voltage. They're very different quantities, but clearly they're related because as you move charges around, you change voltages. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the potential of the plates related to the charge. But also, I have a negative plate and a positive plate close to one another. There's going to be a potential energy associated with it. Here's the energy that is stored in that capacitor. It's the energy it takes that the, <clears throat> that the battery contributes to move those electrons from one plate to the other. That much energy, it's like stretching a spring. It takes so much energy to pull those electrons from one side and place them on the other side. That's how much energy is stored in this device. The potential energy of the capacitor, one half C of the capacitance times the, the voltage difference squared. Okay, let's just do a quick problem. 12 volt battery is connected to a 4.50 microfarad capacitor. Remember this capital F stands for farad. <clears throat> Micro stands for 10 to the minus six. This 4.5 microfarad is the capacitance, that capital C of this device. Okay, when the capacitor is fully charged, fully charged means it reaches equilibrium. It takes time to move those electrons around. When it's fully charged, when it's reached equilibrium, how much potential energy is stored in the capacitor? Okay, let's work out the math. One half the capacitance, there's the 4.5 micro to the minus six, F farad, 12 volt squared, you work out that math, 3.24 to the minus four farad volt squared. Again, how are we gonna figure out what is a farad volt squared? How can I deal with all these units? Well, if we handle things correctly, meaning that micro, we made it a 10 to the minus six, we've got a farad, we've got a volt, we have the correct units, potential energy, the unit of energy must be joule. 3.24 to the minus four joule. Now it's often convenient to get rid of those powers of 10. Imagine that we divided the 3.24 by 10. That would give me 0.324. If I divide one part of the number by 10, I must multiply the other part by 10. So effectively, I do nothing. I divide the 3.24 by 10, I get 0.324. I multiply 10 to the minus four by 10, makes it 10 to the minus three, which is a milli. So the energy in the capacitor, 0 0.324 millijoule. You want to review those kind of conversions. If you want to get milli, you need 10 to the minus three. It means I need to multiply the 10 to the minus four by 10. I have to count of that by dividing the other part by 10. When you take tests, solve problems, if it asks for the answer in micro or milli, you want to know how to get to the unit. I thank you again for watching all the way to the end.